Do you think you could be a driving test examiner? The thing is, being a driving test examiner might not be as easy as you think. You must know the highway code inside out and be able to conduct a fair test of someone's driving. Since we get many comments from people that have spotted driving faults in our videos, we thought you might enjoy a video purely about marking faults correctly. So that's what this video is all about. Before we start, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell so you are alerted when we upload a new video. Also, we love to read your comments, so please scroll down and let us know what you think. On the driving test, we are allowed up to 15 driving faults, but any serious or dangerous faults would result in a test fail. Deciding which fault to give would depend on the severity of the mistake and the situation that it happened in. Driving faults, also known as minor faults, are given when our driving falls below the expected standard, but it wouldn't cause any danger. Examples might be a stall or missed mirror check. Serious faults are given when we do something that causes potential danger. An example would be that we lose control steering around a corner and bump up onto the pavement. Dangerous faults are anything that would put us or others in actual danger and would normally force the examiner to take action to prevent a collision. An example would be poor observation when trying to enter a new road where we haven't spotted other traffic that we need to give way to. The examiner would use the dual control brake to keep us safe. So as you can see, the type of fault given would depend on how much danger the fault caused. We have recorded 15 short driving clips for you to watch and there will be various driving faults for you to spot. You will have to decide how to mark each fault you see and after each clip we will review it and explain how we would have marked it. Let's get started. For this first clip, we gave you an easy fault to spot. We didn't check our blind spots before pulling away. Since there was no danger hidden in our mirror's blind spots, we would give a driving fault for this. Had there been a hazard nearby that could have caused some kind of danger, then the same fault would have been marked more seriously.
We must always look both ways before entering a new road, in case there is traffic we need to give way to. At the end of this road we only looked right, and crossed the give way line before finally looking left. This put us in potential danger of a head-on crash, so we would give a serious fault for this. In this clip, we allowed our road position to drift well over the centre line of the road. We would give a serious fault for this loss of control, as being that far into the other lane puts us in potential danger of a collision with oncoming traffic. If there had actually been oncoming traffic, then the examiner would have had to help us steer the car and then give us a dangerous fault. This time, we didn't check our mirrors before braking for the lower speed limit, and would expect a driving fault for this. We also selected fourth gear before turning left into the minor road. This is not the gear we would usually use, but since it didn't affect our control over the car, we would not expect any fault to be given. When leaving the roundabout, we didn't check our left and centre mirrors before changing our road position and leaving. Since we could see on approach that there was no nearby traffic, we would give a driving fault on this occasion. However, the same fault on a large, busy roundabout would put us in potential danger and we would probably be given a serious fault.
This time, we indicated right on approach to the roundabout, but actually drove straight ahead, second exit. This could mislead other traffic and put us in danger, so we would expect a serious fault for doing this. After the roundabout, we left the left indicator on for some time, but since there was no traffic behind us or nearby left turns, we would only class this as a driving fault this time. First, we drove faster than the 30 mile per hour speed limit. But since it was only for a few seconds and in a quiet area, we would hope to be given a driving fault for this. Doing the same speed in a busy town centre would almost certainly get us a serious fault. We also showed very poor lane discipline on the roundabout, cutting across both lanes. Since there was no other traffic on the roundabout, we would hope to be given a driving fault but we could easily be given a serious fault somewhere busier. This roundabout has good visibility and we can see that it is safe to proceed at the giveaway line without stopping. Stopping and waiting for no reason might delay following traffic and would be classed as undue hesitation and given a driving fault. We should try to avoid doing this repeatedly on the driving test as the examiner might convert the driving faults into a serious fault which would result in a test failure. We changed from third gear to fifth gear at under 30 miles per hour. This is probably not the best gear, but it didn't cause a problem, so we don't think it worthy of a fault. We also crossed our hands when steering into the minor road on the left. This isn't our favorite steering technique, but since our car position and control wasn't affected, no fault should be given. 
the examiner would only give steering faults if our technique reduced our control over our car. We pull over at the side of the road, right next to a bus stop. Parking our car here would definitely obstruct a bus from picking up passengers, and we would expect to get a serious fault for this. We also didn't check our left blind spot when pulling away, but since the right blind spot was checked, we wouldn't expect any fault to be given in this case. We drove closer than necessary to the black parked car and would expect to be given a driving fault for doing this. Ideally, we should always leave a metre gap or about a car door's width between our car and any parked cars, just in case something unexpected happens. If we need to squeeze through any tight gaps, we should drive very slowly to give us more time to steer precisely or stop. On this clip, we are driving on a wide and clear road with a 30 mile per hour limit, and we slow down to under 20 miles per hour for some time. Driving this slowly would be fine if it were necessary, but when the road is clear, we should try to make progress when it is safe to do so. Since there was no following traffic, we would expect a driving fault this time, but do the same thing on a busy major road and it could frustrate other drivers and put us in potential danger and get us a more serious fault.
We see that we need to give way before entering the roundabout, but we stall our engine when trying to move off. Since we restarted the engine quickly and got going on the second attempt, we would expect to be given a driving fault. Repeated stalling, especially if it held up other traffic, would probably be marked as a serious fault. We need to drive around several parked cars on this clip and we repeatedly indicate right and left as we steer around them. This could mislead other road users, especially as there is other side roads nearby. But since there was no one around, we would hope to only be given a driving fault. Before using our indicators, we should consider whether anyone would benefit from our signal or whether it would be clearer not to indicate after all. This time we follow the white car in front a little too closely. On dry roads we should always keep at least a two second gap between us and traffic ahead. And in this case we were a little closer for a moment. Since the speed was low we would expect to be given a driving fault for this, but do it at a higher speed and the fault would certainly be harsher. So, did you spot all the faults before we pointed them out? If you disagree with any of our assessments or have spotted other faults that we didn't mention, then please leave a comment below. It is a lot harder to see the faults when watching on smaller screens, so don't worry if you missed a couple. However, even though a driving test examiner is there in the car being driven, they have to consider the fault in the situation that it was made as this will dictate what type of fault is given, if any. Our advice for anyone on a driving test that has spotted themselves making a fault is to keep driving and complete the full test route. Finish the test and you have a chance of passing, but give up and you definitely won't. If you found this video interesting, then please visit our channel as there are over 100 more tutorial videos to help you improve your driving. If you would like to help us make new videos, then please consider becoming a member or patron of our channel. Thanks for watching.